Rice, if we look at the world today, there are so much complexity. And some people wonder, was it created or how did it get that way? The fascinating thing is that it can self-organize all by itself. How, how can that happen? How can things be self-organized? We see this constant flux of energy all around us from the Big Bang, which is a giant release of energy. So there's been all this energy everywhere. We believe energy is conserved. It can be transformed into different forms, but overall the total amount of energy in the universe is conserved. But yet we see huge fluxes of energy all around us, and we understand how this can be reconciled with order forming. So there's no violation of second laws to have order forming. And physical reality, the, the laws of physics, certainly allow for things like gravitational attraction and for coalescence of bodies and for the early universe to have gone from a uh, uniform field of energy to having clumpiness and eventually galaxies and planets and suns. Uh, so there's not any inconsistency with seeing physical law be self-organized. It's really interesting once we get to the experience that we have on our planet, which is a social experience. So there's a lot of self-organization that happens in social interactions, in societies, in cultural evolution, but there's certainly a lot of manipulation as well, right? So self-organization means that it's decentralized, so there isn't any ruling party that's controlling how things go. In general, it tends to make things more flexible and more adaptive. So when the environment changes, the landscape changes, things can respond very quickly. When you have centralized control, you're much more brittle. Does this give more diversity? Self-organization gives a lot more diversity. I think a great example that we've been seeing discussed recently in many cases is how we as a society are really pushing for monocultures. So we want to have things that are very uniform, especially with, in the United States with our food selection. So we want potatoes to look a certain way, we want apples to look a certain way. So instead of allowing the self-organized process of natural selection and evolution, which relies on vast variability in gene pools, we're really forcing things to be one way. So this monoculture idea is sort of the opposite of self-organization, where we're directing, where we have a centralized control and we're really forcing things to move in one way, and then it becomes brittle and we lose that ability to adapt and change. So it's interesting how our experience is very social and we see cultural evolution. Some of it is self-organized. I think the lovely example of this is all the transformation we've seen from online social networks. So this notion we can also think of as socio-technical congruence. So how social creatures like us interact with technology, and we're really using it in ways that were never anticipated by their creators. So the Arab Spring, where we've seen a lot of social uprising organized by a tool that people thought would be more for one-to-one -one communication. So would you say there is a general theory, a general system that is working? You mentioned the early universe where gravitation creates um, uh, complexity out of what looks like a very homogeneous uh, plasma soup. Yes. And, now, uh, and, and now you're talking about social networks in, the, in, in, in modern day uh, technological communications. So these two vast, what would seem to have nothing to do with one another, yeah. really at their underlying core have this concept of, of self-organization, complex adaptive systems. I mean, is that, do you see some underlying principle that affects just everything that happens? I think we could view it that way. And uh, I think that the selection mechanisms are a little bit different in those two examples. But we could view it in general as things evolving and adapting. In these natural worlds, there's much less variability. The laws are what they are. And in more uh, complex systems, complex adaptive systems, we see the history has played a long role. So the path that's taken the system to this point actually influences whether it's fit, what the selection mechanisms are going to be, and obviously in the physical world, the laws of nature are the laws of nature. I know an uh, outstanding question is, has physics ever changed over time? So is, are the laws of physics the same today as they were at the start of the universe? So I know this is an outstanding question that we're going to grapple with for decades, but 
This is a distinction. So though we can view both as self-organized, the physical world, and these complex adaptive systems of systems, there's still a huge difference in that those complex systems really rely on the history, the trajectory that's brought them to this point. But the way of thinking you have in both cases is very similar. How you analyze the problem is a similar one. It is. And one question that has come to my mind in the last few weeks has really been thinking about algorithms. So I also do computer science. So I think a lot about algorithms. An algorithm is a set of instructions that transforms information. Hopefully it orders that information or it wouldn't be a very good algorithm. So can we think of the laws of physics as some kind of algorithm as well? F equals MA. So an algorithm that just says if you're gravitational attraction, so you move towards each other. So I've really been trying to think about how information and algorithmic complexity might relate to the laws of physics and how we think about them. So again, bringing the viewpoint to the same ideas, even though the physical world and this world of complex systems of systems are so disparate from each other.